We've got one today that I've held off on for just a little bit because I wanted to get the other part to it, which is the RBA or RDTA for it. It is the Aegis Boost. Welcome to the Vapor Trail channel. I'm Tony. Yep, this is what we're looking at today, the Aegis Boost. Now this is, well, you know, you could call it a pod system because it does have kind of a pod type tank, or you call it an all-in-one, whatever you want to call it. This is the smallest version of an Aegis that there is. And at first, when I first got this, I've been using this one here for a little while, just using it with the coils that come with it, the mesh coils. You know, you've got two different versions of it, 0 0.6 ohm at 15 to 25 watts and 0 0.4 ohms at 25 to 33 watts. And they worked okay, you know, they're good. It's a nice little mod, it looks really good. It's got all the stuff that you expect from an Aegis device, you know, it's waterproof. The device itself is, but this isn't. I mean, you know, liquid can get into that, you know what I'm saying. Crush resistance and all of that. It's got the rubber casing on it and metal body. Internal battery, yeah, 1500 milliamp hours, 3.7 mil. And yeah, this is the one that I had been using. Then they sent me this and they sent me this right here. Now this is not the final packaging for this. This is the RBA pod. Uh, it's more of an RDTA. Do you remember those RDTA mods like that came out from iJoy? And well, there was a period where there was a whole bunch of them coming out where it was like the deck was built into the mod and there was a tank inside of it and all that kind of stuff. Well, that's, that's really what this is kind of like, but we'll take a look at that in just a minute. But this RBA tank thing, that really changed my mind on the device and I, I'm quite digging it now. So up here at the top says, Aegis Boost and a uh, this well the color of this one is Aura Glow and it's you know it's kind of the rainbow heat treated look it, it actually looks really good it says here that Aegis Boost is the lightest yet toughest pod mod that supports the usage of both pod and RDTA up to max 40 watts with a built-in 1500 milliamp hour battery which is pretty big the mod is IP67 rated made to be corrosion resistant and tear resistant it comes with two separate coils specifically designed for MTL and direct too long vaping experience. Uh, the RDTA parts are sold separately. 40 watts, 1500 milliamp hours, MTL or DTL, pod or RDTA. Uh, it's got airflow adjustment on it, so that's good, easy to fill. Canthal and it's, uh, well, all the proofs. Of course, you got your scratch and check down here or a glow. Right, and we open up the box. The mod is sitting here, and when I got it, it had the actual pod in it, and this is what the pod looks like. So you get this, and it says prime coil for three minutes before use. Anytime you put a new coil in, you're going to want to do that that comes off of there i do like that right on the coil on the bottom here it gives you the entire rundown of what the coil is that's good so you can just grab it like this and pull it out it is press fit in there and it's fit in there really tight and there we go that's the pod right there and your coil you can see there's a nice big mesh inside of there both coils are pretty similar one's just a little bit tighter and different ohms airflow adjustment is over here on the side you got this little wheel right here it's kind of cool you just turn that and you can see that the airflow is adjusting inside of there. Can you see that? There we go. Just like that. Then when you put a new coil in here, it's got flat sides. You just put those to the side, pop it in just like that. Make sure that you get it in there seated correctly. There is a little tool that was in here. Where is that? Okay, this little tool right here actually helps to get the coil out of there. You can just go like this, pull it out. There we go. Let's see if we can get it in there correctly now. Just like that. At least that's what I'm assuming this tool is for. So you get an extra drip tip that's in here, because when you take this off of here, you've got this kind of flat drip tip thing. That can come off of there, and you can put a round one on there if you prefer. It does have a cap that snaps on there to keep dust and stuff out of there, but you know what? These things, it's, it's not on there super tight, so I'm predicting most people are going to lose that. Get a micro USB charging cable inside there and another coil. And you can see that this one is tighter than the other one. Smaller diameter on this coil and it is 0 0.6 ohms, 15 to 25 watts. Get this little envelope inside of here and this little envelope, like a bowl in a China shop here. Get a little card with the Aegis Boost and the Aegis Squonk. A little warning card and warranty information. User manual is quite simple. I mean, it's not a very complicated device, which is good because, well, if you're somebody who's just getting started, what's nice is that you can get this kit and you can use the coils that are in it. And then if you ever get into a situation where you can't find those coils or whatever, you can go on to the RDTA portion of it. I would recommend buying them together though. 
Even if you don't think you're gonna use the rebuildable, yeah, that would be a good idea. Really easy to use manual. There's like basically three pages to it. And there are the specifications on this device. Like I said earlier, 1500 milliamp hours. Getting back to the device itself, the cartridge comes off of here by pushing that right there and pushing over, kind of latches in just like that, snap. And when it does, it's gonna ask you if it's a new coil, you're gonna say yes. Of course, that's the fire button, up and down buttons right here. And if you just press and hold both of those buttons together, then it'll lock the device, press and hold them again, and it will unlock the device. Oh, USB is over here on the side. You can see it's got a nice big plug to it with extra ridges to make sure that it stays in place. Of course, you can adjust it all the way up and down. That's five watts, and then it'll round robin once you hit it again when it gets to the top or the bottom of it. Got your ohms over here, battery right there. And of course, your puff counter is right over in the corner. If you want to reset that, you hold down and fire. And now it's highlighted so you can actually adjust that. I mean, reset it, All right? And then just hold the fire button and that goes away. Now, if this is locked, we'll do this. And then you press the fire button three times, one, two, three. Now the fire button is also locked. So all three of the buttons are locked. One, two, three, and it's unlocked. There we go. So now these buttons are locked, but this one's not. So it does give you some versatility in that area. And of course, turning it on and off just requires five clicks. One, two, three, four, five. There we go, power off. One, two, three, four, five, and it comes back on. This portion right here is all rubberized, right? All the way down to here, and then you've got the metal right here, and then there's leather right here, and it's stitched. On the rainbow one, you get like a purple stitching or kind of a pinkish stitching on there. I can tell you that this gets a lot of fingerprints on it. It's a bit of a magnet for those. So that in itself would be enough for most people to go, yeah, that's definitely something that I will use. Then enter the RBA pod for this. Now some places they're calling it RBA, some places they're calling it RDTA, like on the back of the box, it said RDTA. But it is more of an RDTA. Let's go ahead and pull this thing out of here. It's a pretty chunky little cartridge, so when you put it next to this, though, it's really not that much different in size, just that the top of it is, and there's a good reason for that. I mean, everything else is the same. By the way, fill on these things, both of them, the fill is right here in the front. So you just stick your thumb up underneath there and you pull it out. There's a big plug right there. So it is top fill, makes it real easy. All right, so up here, drip tip is basically a standard 510 style drip tip with dual O-rings. And then you grab onto that knurling right there and unscrew this and whoa, there you go. You got a nice big deck. Now this is really easy to manipulate. You just unscrew those, there are springs. And by the way, an extra drip tip in here. So you can either have the large drip tip or the small one on here. And inside the box, you're gonna get a bag with some coils and they give you a couple of different coil options. I went with the, I guess that's a Clapton coil right there. And that's three millimeter diameter and then you've got these that are spaced coils that are just, you know, single wire canthal. You get some shoelace cotton in here and then you've got extra screws and an extra spring inside of here as well as the tri-tool. So when dealing with this deck, you can actually just pop it onto the mod itself and use that to do your build. There is no other way. You're not going to be able to put this on an ohm reader, but you know, the mod has an ohm reader in it. So you just unscrew these. They lift up, as you can see, because the spring that's underneath there. I took them all the way out so that I could get the lead underneath that because the leads you'll see here in just a second. Unscrew it just like that. So you can see how the coil is wrapped. I just put the loop on the top, hold it with my fingers like that, slide it in like that, and then drop in this side right here. Voila, man, you can pretty much just hold on to that and screw it down and tighten it up. Then you just wanna get the coil properly positioned. You can see it's a bit of a tight fit right there. Just don't want it to touch either one of those clamps. Then once you get all your hot spots out and stuff, all you gotta do is put your cotton through there. You got the lace cotton and then fluff it up and stuff it down those holes right there so it hangs down inside the tank. Just like I said, it's basically an RDTA. Then once you get that done, you just put this on and you gotta push down a little bit, get it to thread and then boom, that's it, man. I've actually got this one freshly wicked, so pull that out, and that's what it looks like when you're all done. Now, I did lift the coil up a little bit. I didn't want it to be right down between these things, so it's right above that. Don't want to lift it too high, though, because it, you know there is doming inside here, but if it gets too high, you don't want it to touch the walls. It'll short out. I just built it right on the mod itself. There we go. And that came out to 0 0.6 ohms as far as the uh, the Clapton type coil that was inside of there. So the Aegis Boost with the regular coils, pretty darn good. The Aegis Boost with the RBA, oh yeah, I'm liking that. So yeah, it's a nice little device and it's actually super lightweight. As they say on here, it is military grade pod, IP67 rated, best for outdoor and action users, stain resistant and tear resistant leather sleeve, 
rust proof and corrosion resistant zinc alloy body frame and food grade silicone rubber for waterproofing all that in a very small lightweight package the mesh coils that are in it they actually they, they work well predictably right i mean mesh coils are typically very good either way but the rebuildable for it that's what really makes this thing shine for me anyways only little caveats is that it's kind of hard to see the liquid level i mean right now i've got light shining through it this way so i can see that when you're filling it it's like okay well where is it so i tend to end up going like this and pulling it off and filling it like that the regular mesh cartridge that goes on here it's it's not that big of a deal to fill it because you know the fill is right there and the bottle doesn't get in the way but this one's much larger and closer to that fill port this is the rebuildable right here so what ends up happening is a lot of times depending on what bottle i've got if you've got a tall bottle getting it in there might be a little bit difficult so you might even have to take off the cap to fill it not that big of a deal just a little caveat so for this one i've got the standard cartridge on it that comes with it that's i guess the other other thing is I would really love to see them actually just include both different pods in there maybe charge a few dollars extra and do it that way then again a lot of people that are buying something like this is you know it's just going to be a simple thing to just put the coil in there and go but you know for future longevity it's it's nice to know that you can actually get the rebuildable portion for it because hey if something happens the FDA makes it so you can't buy coils for these things anymore you can always get wire and cotton well at least hopefully anyways and rebuild it so right now this is the mesh one let's try this out And it works well, you know, I've got standard liquid in here. This is six milligrams that's inside both of these. I've got the same milligrams and the same PGVG ratio in both of them. And I've got the airflow only open a portion at that point. So let's go ahead and open that airflow more. That was about a third of the way. And I'm gonna crank up the wattage just a little bit. So I've got this at 20 watts right now and the airflow wide open. And it hits really well. Thing is, I like a lot of airflow and that is actually too much airflow for me. So we're just gonna shut it down to about halfway. And that right there is perfect. Now, of course, I'm doing these kind of more, not really a mouth to lung. You could tighten this thing all the way up and go mouth to lung. It's just not my preference, so I'm using it kind of more like a uh, direct lung or kind of restrictive lung hit. That's the kind of thing that I like on these small devices like this. In fact, I'm going to close it just a little bit more. And that works really well. So that is the mesh one. So now we've got the rebuildable here. And, you know, the thing about the rebuildable is you, well, even the coils that they give you, they give you two different kinds of coils for two different kinds of vapes right now. I've got the bigger coil that they provided in here. And of course you can build whatever coil you want to put in there as long as you can fit it in there and everything works out right. And this thing goes up to 40 watts. So you're gonna wanna keep your build in that kind of wheelhouse. So we're at 20 watts and 0 0.6 ohms is what it's showing on the ohm reader. Yeah, so while that mesh coil is good, this, to me, it's just way, way better, the rebuildable on here. I keep saying rebuildable because they say RBA on some of the stuff, and then on some of the stuff it says RDTA, and I'd agree it's more of an RDTA because your build deck is up above, you're building on it and dropping your wicks down inside the tank. And that airflow is almost all the way open. I'm just going to open it all the way. All right, so all the way open on the airflow. It's just, it's so much smoother, it's better hit, everything is just so much better. So if you are gonna get one of these Aegis Boosts, I personally recommend that you go ahead and spring for the uh, rebuildable pod or cartridge for it. That will be available in about mid-January. So eh, I don't know, maybe buy one of them and then just pop for that later because you'll already have what you need to get going with it. Then once you put that rebuildable on there, you'll be like, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Let me close that up to about halfway. And that's one thing I really do like about this. The airflow is right there, man. And it's super easy to adjust it just by turning the wheel. So let's go, that's halfway. That is so, so nice. Halfway, all the way, whatever, the RBA or rebuildable for this thing is definitely, in my opinion, the way to go. It's a good little device, and the Aegis series has been really good about the body of the mod being waterproof. Just remember the board that's inside this is not waterproof, so if something does happen and water gets down in there, which, I mean, you know, this is an open pod right here, or cartridge, and liquid can get into that from the exterior, Plus, inside of here, there are holes inside of there. So I don't know the validity of the overall waterproofness of it. But for normal life situations, 
it's going to be fine. If you're into fishing and water gets splashed on you, that kind of thing, I would not worry about it at all. So that is the Aegis Boost and the, well, the Aegis Boost RDTA, which is going to be sold separately and you'll be able to get that about mid-January. I want to thank you so much for your support here on the channel. Likes, comments, shares, subscriptions are always important to a channel like mine. So if you like what you see, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, there is a red subscribe button down there. Go ahead and click that. If you think you're subscribed, just take a look at the button every once in a while. If it's gray, you're still subscribed. If it's red, you're not. So I'd appreciate it if you click it again. It is the Christmas season and man, it's so far been really good for me. I've been able to spend time with family and friends, company Christmas party for my wife and all that kind of stuff. It's, I love this time of year. I had a time in my life where I was like, nah, eh, you know, that kind of thing. But it's just, it's been rejuvenated for me and I just love it. So I hope you're having a great holiday season or Merry Christmas to you. That's, that's my thing. I do have links down there for Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram. If you have one of those, I'd appreciate a follow. And on Facebook, you're going to find plenty of information to educate yourself so you can educate others. I do all, you know, any article that I put up there, I vetted, checked it out, made sure that it's going to be viable for you. And don't forget, I have links down there for advocacy. There's all kinds of great trade groups and stuff that you can join. And when you do, you're going to get information constantly from them. So it's it's wonderful that they can help us out and keep us informed. It's better to be informed than to be cowering in fear. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. We'll catch you next time on the Vapor Trail Channel. <laughs>